Maybe you're thinking about planning that spring break trip and you want to hit the beach with your RV. Well, today we are going to share with you four of our favorite locations in the Southeast to go beach camping in this episode of Travels with Delaney, the podcast. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Patrick. And I'm Patty. And we're so glad you stopped by our podcast today. Patty, I can't believe this is episode number seven. I know. It seems like we just had episode number one. I know. <laughs> and um, we're really enjoying doing these podcasts. They're fun. Yeah. I, I, I like them. People are saying they really enjoy the conversation style that we have. Yeah. And I know you actually, this is something you really enjoy, even I more do. than video. I do. I don't know what I don't know why I just, I, it's all about the headset and just jibber jabber, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little more laid back than shooting video. Right. It had to, not to be so technical. It right. makes me nervous on video. Well, the thing about video is if we're doing like a vlog style, travel style, where we're just recording whatever we're doing, mm -hmm. you don't mind that. No, that's almost like jibber jabber on video. It's, it's like podcast on video. <laughs> yeah. But when we get into like the education, what I call the educational style videos, where we're reviewing a product or showing people how to do something, those are the ones you're not so fond of. Right. They make me nervous. Do they? Yes, they do. So, they well, me. <laughs> anyway, we are so glad that you have joined us. And I think what we're going to do, because we have so much to cover in this episode, I think we're going to jump in. But one of our favorite places to go at spring break mm -hmm. after a long winter here in the, the I can Midwest. Picture it right now in my head. Yeah. And we like to go to the beach. Yes. The beach. I love the beach. The puppies love the beach. Right. Yeah. It's nice. And so we have found you can actually camp at the beach. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so today what we want to do is share with you four different locations in the Southeast that we have actually camped at with our RV. And we'll tell you where those are at and share some of the differences, because I think everybody has a different idea of what it means to, quote, camp at the beach. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Well, let's go ahead and start with number one. And we're going to kind of do these in reverse order of how close we were to the to, beach to the with water. the actual right. RV. Absolutely. And so the first location is Gulf Shores, Alabama. And when we were in Gulf Shores, we stayed at the Luxury RV Resort. It was awesome. We thought we were so swift. We could just walk, what, a few blocks, was it? I'm going to say, I don't think it Maybe. was more than four blocks. Yeah. It was an easy walk. Right. And you went by some restaurants and cutie little shops. And um, it was just nice to just to be able to walk and not have to drive the truck or anything. It was perfect. Right. I mean, there were places there at the beach mm -hmm. where you could actually park but we never did drive up to the beach. That's no. how close it was. Right, right. Now, there are lots of other RV parks in that area. We just like this one. It was small. It was quiet. We were by a main, I guess, thoroughfare road. That right, coming the into the beach. But it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. And the spaces of the campsite were pretty spaced out. We camped with our friends, Russ and Carrie, and... um it was just nice. They had a pool and it was just a nice little place. Yeah. And the thing is, I believe it is one of the closest RV parks to the beach. That's what I was thinking. That too. Most of the other RV parks, you are going to have to drive right. to actually get to the beach. And that's what we really like. Now, one of the more popular places, and we hear this all the mm -hmm. time from our videos in Gulf Shores, is the state park there. Right. We went there once. Golf State Park or something like something that. Like that. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a nice state park, but. You would have to have like bicycles or a golf cart or your car. Uh, yeah. to get there because it would be a long We thought it walk. was way too long to walk to the <laughs> beach, but a lot of people like it because it is a state park. Right. So it has a little bit different vibe than like a commercial campground right. like luxury RV park. Right. There were some like woody spots and, you know, you're further away from the road. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, but there are options, but, you know, e what we just liked is we really like, we prefer to be as close to the sand as possible. Well, don't forget, we were so close, we could walk to your new favorite custard spot. That's right. Rita's. <laughs> Rita's was on the way to the beach. But we found that he was like, oh, I found absolute fabulous ice cream custard. It's great. Yeah. 
<laughs> the gelati. Yeah. They the combine gelati. Italian <laughs> ice with custard. Oh, oh we went guys, there a few amazing. times. Let's just say we needed to like go on a diet after that spring break trip. <laughs> well, and you know, the thing was we had never been to Gulf Shores, Alabama. No. And what we found about that beach is number one, it might Beautiful. be one of the cleanest beaches we have ever been to. Well, we saw what just some, I don't know if it was just county workers or whatever. They were raking that beach with the little four wheeler pulling a rake, cleaning up anything that was and left I behind. I believe they do that every night they say it was beautiful yeah and so it's that white powdery sand yeah. and um and then again with the rv park we could walk to restaurants mm -hmm. there was there was plenty of restaurants and gift shops the other thing that i noticed was that it didn't seem it had a little bit of touristy feel, but not terrible. But not like mm -hmm. some of the beaches that we've been to. Yeah, it's not like I call it an amusement park on the beach. This right. was just it had a little bit of tourist stuff if you wanted, but it was just a real quiet, pretty beach to just mellow out at. It was beautiful. Right. So that's number one. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, these are not in order no. of what we like. These are in order of how close we actually were to the stand. The so the so team, at, yeah. at Luxury RV Resort in Gulf Shores, we were about, we're going to say four blocks. About four blocks. Yeah. So definitely walkable. Oh, yeah, definitely. The uh, second one. Yep. Gets us a little, got us a little bit closer right. to the beach. And that was North Beach Camp Resort over in St. Augustine, Florida. It was really cool because what was it like mangroves we were camping? I don't know what it was. It but, was awesome. And here's what I'll say about North Beach Camp Resort. The sites are really small. They're tight, but. But. You don't feel it. No, because there is so much greenery between every site, at least the site we were in. And it looked like most sites were this way. Right. Way that you i mean you might hear your neighbors but you couldn't see, see them. them necessarily no now it was a little tricky getting was, backed into the site we were on yeah it was a little it was a, you, i mean you we did use your it. master skills didn't yeah you? <laughs> but but here's what we really like besides the fact that at that park um we did like the way we oh, felt yeah. like we were almost like in an african jungle or it something. did it just felt like you were somewhere totally different it was tropics. awesome we yeah. would walk out and it was just literally our, our i say our patio because it was all sand it was all sand. but it was um it was just all greenery like mm -hmm. and, and so it just had a really cool vibe mm -hmm. they had a pool there which we right. never used no we didn't so i mean it's your typical rv park right but you could walk right across the street yep and you were at, at public the, beach access. Yep. And you were on the beach. And also what was awesome there is that at the time we were there, it was a very pet friendly beach. Yes. And so we could take the pups out any time of the day, I think. We must have took them out in the evening when it was cooler, but e and it seemed to be overcast when we were staying there. So right. it wasn't so hot for them. But my goodness, you could walk on the beach with your dogs. And that beach mm -hmm. is very non-commercial. No, no. So it commercial. was a lot of like high, you know, high rise. If I, I don't, know, maybe I shouldn't say like high homes. rise, but homes and condos Those. and things like that. Um, there again, there were restaurants along the way. In fact, there was a restaurant right across. Right. We didn't actually eat there, no, but we could have. Um, yeah. But then you're just a short drive into the historic part of St. Augustine, right? Which is awesome. And um, yeah. Now, you brought up the pets. We should mention Gulf Shores was not really pet friendly No, we in had, terms of the beach. Yeah, that beach, they weren't allowed on it when we were there in March. I think we had to, there was other there beaches. There was, you had to drive clear to yeah. the end, and there was a small area we heard that you could take your pets Pet, out on. Yeah. So if you have pets and you're looking for a pet friendly beach, mm -hmm. um, there is a small area at Gulf Shores, but... At St. Augustine, and again, we were there in July, June, 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 June. Yeah. June. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know what their rules are year round, and you always want to check each beach for because right. sometimes their rules change based upon the season right. with, when it comes to pets. But when we were there in June, you were as long as the, I believe they were on right. a leash, um, you could have your pets out on Absolutely. the beach, and, and they just love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was a again, it was a clean beach. It was very clean. Yeah, not a lot of seaweedy and not a lot of trash. Right, you could tell they kept it really clean. I and here's the thing: what made it different from Gulf Shores was, if I remember right, it has a lot more of that compacted sand. Right, that hard. I think of like Daytona Beach sand. Right, if you ever been to Daytona? That hard kind of sand, not the fluffy. Yeah, sand. like where the where the tide comes in right. that was hard there was there was some areas where you had like, that soft like a little dune but it harp, wasn't yeah. that white pristine no. it was more of the brown sand right. if i remember right yeah yeah but um yeah that to me was i, I there was just something about that campground i really cool. liked it was magical it was i don't know it was just neat 
And if you it. remember, we walked to the back of the park right. and you came out on the intercoastal waterway right. and there was a restaurant back there. Yep. Um, there was like, I think there's some docks for people to have their boats and whatnot. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I think so. People had their boats back there. They could go out into the ocean then on the walk causeway, but yeah, it was neat. And that's kind of one of those places. Like if you were planning a trip mm -hmm. where maybe you do want to do some beach, but you also want other things to do. Right. Um, you know, definitely St. Augustine is what America's oldest city. I yeah, believe. I think so. And so, um, you could just drive over the causeway and, um, right there you are. And there's tons to do there, right. uh, especially if you like the historical type right. stuff. And yep. Although even the historical stuff has become quite commercial. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> when we were there. So, yeah. So, yeah. So if you're looking and I'm sure people are thinking, really, that's of all the places in Florida, you're going to do St. Augustine, but actually for us, and, and we haven't camped everywhere, no. but for us, we actually really enjoyed that. It was nice. Yeah. Um, because again, a lot of times you can get near a beach. Like we don't want to have to drive in. No, I just want to be able to walk to yeah. the beach. I don't want to have to unhitch the truck, which, which it was unhitched, but right. I don't want to have to drive the truck. We were unhitched, somewhere. but it's just, yeah, you have to, it's and park and then so much nicer just to walk. getting in your bathing suit and walking to the beach absolutely so yep all right so where are we headed next we're, we're headed i think to south carolina we are we're gonna head north now i know <laughs> a lot of people might say well if you're really talking spring break is is myrtle beach south carolina really an option and at it, least for us it, it is. is yeah what we should say is depending on what you consider spring break right the weather can be not so nice right meaning you the but in the summer, you know, summer, you might, yeah. yeah, it doesn't but, matter. But like spring break, if we want really warm temperatures, sometimes South Carolina is not the place to go. Right. So it depends on do you want to <laughs> lay out and suntan? Right. Or are you OK, like we are at spring break, just <clears throat> being at the beach and going for long walks on the beach yeah. and watching sunsets, right. and, you know, or sunrises. Right. And, and so for shark's teeth and looking for shells and stuff like that. Yeah. So we always stay and we've stayed there many times. Mm -hmm. Love this place. Um, Myrtle Beach Travel Park. It's now, awesome. It is the farthest point north on Myrtle Beach that you can be before it actually becomes North Myrtle Beach. Right. And so it is a way from the what you would the hub bub. yeah the carnival uh, yeah like the to carnival call it. stuff <laughs> yeah the boardwalk area and stuff like that and we tend to prefer that because we're not really necessarily looking for the carnival boardwalk stuff. stuff yeah. yeah and you can always drive to that sure if you want to do that stuff and there's shopping areas you can drive to that we found and if you want food we found good restaurants but yeah, we like it there. It's really pretty. You're right on the white sand. Yeah. And this is what's different. So remember, Luxury RV Resort, you had about a four block walk. Right. Um, North Beach, you have to cross a two lane highway. Right. Or f I think it's A1A is what you're I actually think it crossing. Is, yeah. But I mean, and, and you can cross it. You just may have oh, to stand yeah. and wait for well, the Well, there's traffic. like, if you remember, there was a thing that you could push. Was there a would, crossing? To warn, you know, that you okay. want to cross and then the drivers would, you know hopefully stop for you <laughs> it wouldn't be like frogger where you got to <laughs> so yeah no nobody wants to <laughs> no, play frogger, frogger going to the beach right um but at myrtle beach travel yeah. park you walk from your campsite over a little dune over the dune and you're there you're there like you don't have to cross any roads or anything like that right now i will say Myrtle Beach Travel Park, along with several other, yes. there's several of these, what we call mega resorts right. on Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. um, they are huge. So depending on where your site is, that you may walk, have a longer walk. Yeah, yeah, that walk could be, you know, 30, 30 yards, or that walk could be two or three football fields long. Right. Because we always try to get, I guess, our site closer to the dune. Right. There's like a dune like line, I guess, a ridge. Yeah, like the sand dune. Mm -hmm. And then they have those cutouts right. that you can walk through. Right. Um, but yeah, and that's one of the reasons we have went there a couple times for spring break is even though we know the weather may not be like the awesome, the super weather. warm yeah. where you lay out on the beach. What we really like is the fact that number one, it's not nearly as busy, right? Because most of the snowbirds have started to head home, yet their their big season in Myrtle Beach is going to be in those warm summer months, right? So it's kind of that transition period, right? And um, so we can get a site right up front mm -hmm. and just walk right out and um and again pet friendly very pet beach. friendly you can just take them we've, we've taken the pups out many times just walking on that beach and i don't remember i want to say maybe in the summer there are restrictions with pets <laughs> yes there is because well one the sand is so hot right for their little 
feet. Um, but yeah, there's only certain times in the summer. And I think basically it's, you know, early in the morning, early in the, late in the evening when it's not so hot, but there's certain time frames you can have them out there. But this, when we go. Yeah. In the in spring, when we go yeah, or spring break. Right. Um, yeah. We can take them Summer's out. Summer's just too hot the for them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we and we do again. Myrtle Beach has so much to do. Oh my goodness! I you mean, could, geez. you can now. You could just stay at Myrtle Beach Travel Park and the just whole stay time. there. Yeah, they got Lazy River. We we've done that before. You give you the the tubes and you ride the tubes around. They have an indoor pool. They have a little restaurant there. We've gotten breakfast at yep. before. And sometimes they have grocery like store, like a grocery. Like store. They had like a local, like kind of like a marching band, but they were kind of more jazzy playing. Yeah, they do whatever. activities, yeah. entertainment, that type right, of thing, especially right. in the summer months. They're right. crazy in the summer months. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I, I think the thing that really attracts, even though I'm not necessarily into the hubbub of Myrtle Beach all with the all the touristy crazy, stuff, yeah. being able to walk out of our camper and and just again, right onto down the, the beach. beach. Yep. That, that I think is, mm -hmm. again, the two prior though. I mean, I don't mind a four block. No, walk. that was nice. That was fun. I think though, the thing is, here's what I think the difference is between a four block walk and a, you know, 30, 30 yards, let's say. Yeah. If it, if I'm tired in the evening and you might say, do you want to walk up to the beach? The four block walk, I may say, <laughs> like, oh, oh man, I don't know <laughs> where you know, being only um, 30 feet away mm -hmm. from sure, the, the makes beach. it so much like doable. Yeah. Doesn't seem like, oh man, I got to walk so far. But yeah, you do those evening strolls, early morning sunrise strolls. You can just sit and watch the bar. We've seen barges go by, clear out in the ocean. It's a place I just like to sit and watch the ocean. Yep. And get, get re re rejuvenated, I guess, is what you'd say. All right, Patty. The last one is one of my absolute favorite places we have ever. Camped. It was awesome. Um, and I would say of uh, beaches, beach locations, mm -hmm. not necessarily the beach itself, but beach locations. I would probably put this number one. Right. Tetons is always going to be my number one spot. But today's episode is it's not, not about, about mountain the, camping. Yeah. So <laughs> we won't talk about the Tetons. Um, but in ter terms of beaches, this, this is mine. Cool. I don't know if this is yours, but this is definitely mine. I think if we would have been there when we were, when it wasn't so hot, but I think yeah, it was nice. It okay. was awesome. So we probably should let everybody in on it. So this is number four yep. in our list. And again, remember, these aren't in order of nope, favorability. This is location to the beach. Yeah. Because this is as close as you can get to the sand because you're actually on the beach. Well, yeah, we had to we had to be concerned about high tide. Yes. <laughs> like this is Brazoria Beach near Surfside, Texas. <clears throat> now understand this is not a campground. No. This is the actual beach. beach. And they allow you yep. to pull your RV out onto the beach. Yep. Find a spot wherever you want. That you think is most level and yep. go for it. And and <laughs> you can you can set up shop and enjoy. Oh yeah. Um and as Patty said, one of the things you really want to make sure is you want to make sure you're high enough up mm -hmm. that when tide comes in, your <laughs> you RV is boat. not part of it. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to become a yacht at that no, point. No, so, no. <laughs> um, and you can tell where people. Oh have yeah, camped. I mean, you you know, well, you could tell even in the sand, kind of where high tide has been, and right the, the dark color sand, and it, so and forth. it's a really fine line because you don't want to get too far uh -huh. into the soft sand because then you could potentially get stuck. Yep. So you, you can tell yeah. where people have camped right. and, and that type of thing. Um, and one of the things is Surfside, the city, yep. does not allow camping on their beach. No. So you need to drive north out of Surfside. Um, I don't, I'm going to say this. We went to entrance number three. Yep. If you go to entrance number three, you are well outside the mm -hmm. city limits and then you will be okay to camp. Now, you may be able to camp. Maybe other spots at entrance yeah too. i don't know we went to number three that was the advice we had been given right i did a little research yep and we, we talked to some folks and they said go to three so. and so that's what we did mm -hmm. and then once we turned north in on three in, in you know we went in entrance three, three. turn north to, like you're headed towards galveston away from surfside i don't know we didn't go very far no. and we found a nice flat spot we knew somebody had camped there because there was like wood that they had had a little fire mm -hmm. And we pulled in and uh, unhitched. We leveled up and 
we ended up staying there three nights. Right, because we've done a little more research to find out how long can we be here, because even the science driving in didn't say. They're not real clear. I've no. heard people say you need a permit. Other people say you don't need a permit. So we were there three nights. We and stayed three because we knew we could stay at least three. I mean, sheriff patrolled the area. They went right by us a few times. They didn't yeah. say a word, so I figured we were fine. And there were <laughs> other people out there oh, camping yeah. with us, so it wasn't like we were all alone. No. Um, but, and this is my piece of advice, is when you go pick out a spot, don't park on top of somebody. That beach goes miles north that you can camp for and why free. Why would you say that, dear? Well, we had a situation. <laughs> I think it was on the third night. Right, the last night. Somebody set up a <laughs> camper van right patty corner to us. us. Number one, we we thought they were there just for the day, which is fine. There were like during the day, the beach gets really busy. Right. And and we just thought, oh, okay, they set up. Well, as evening came, we realized oh, they're, they're not leaving. <laughs> And there were two issues. Number one, I'm like, why are they camped so close to us? Because there was nobody on down. No. Yeah, they could have went down a ways. And number two, I'm like, do they realize the water comes up to where they're parked? Right. And I think it was around 10 o'clock that night. They kind of shifted, didn't they? They ended up moving. Because I think once they saw the tide coming in, even they realized. But I was, I, I don't know why they parked so close. And, you know, so that's one of my things is you have this huge beach. Don't park on top of somebody else. Right. Now, the downside to true beach camping where you're on the beach mm. is you have no hookups. Nope. None. We were... So you need to show up with yep. your water tank full or yep. whatever you're going to need. Yep. And you need ways to power whatever it is you plan to power. Exactly. So, and you said, I think you started to allude to this. We were there in June. Um, Late it, June. Yeah, it was hot, it was, but we, we were getting a really nice breeze. We were there, right, I guess, at a good time because by the end of our three days, that breeze had kind of ended. It had. And it was just kind of really sticky hot. And uh, but we, we were lucky. We When we were there, we had a nice coastal breeze. We could able to open up all our windows. Uh, I just remember Bessie just loving it. She'd sit because she likes to be on our bed and the breeze was just coming in, getting her. And we were just away from everyone, so we could keep those windows open all night to help us cool off. And yep. um, it was we slept with the windows open, open and um, yeah, it was yeah, fine. It was fine, yeah. and you could hear the waves mm -hmm. crashing in all night long. Yeah. I mean, it was. Now I will say, it's not the cleanest beach. No, there was lots of um, maybe I guess I don't know if you call it ocean debris, yeah. like logs, logs and limbs, and, and just seaweed. stuff. Like, yeah. And they don't necessarily clean no, it up, or no. at least when we were there, they hadn't. No. But there was also something kind of natural about that. Well, yeah, it just seemed like you weren't in, like, you know, you're kind of, like, I guess, out there. Yeah. You weren't in, like, civilization, I guess. Well, yeah, it wasn't, you know. I mean, Even though you were still in civilization. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah and, and the nice thing is there, you're close to Galveston. Oh, yeah. You're maybe 20 minutes away, I would right. say. I don't know. It well, there was a Bucky's far. nearby that we would go. There's to a Bucky's get... in Surfside now. It's one of the small Bucky's. <laughs> tiny, but we would go down there every um, before lunchtime. I think it was because we would go out and um, we would always stop at the Bucky's, and I would buy ice because we were using our icy, icy breeze. breeze. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with our icy breeze, it's a cooler. That is also like an air conditioner. What it does is you put just a little bit of water in it. You fill it up with ice. It has a pump and it pumps that cold water up through a series of coils. And then there's a blower on it. And so during the day when it was warm in the trailer, we would just have icy breeze going. And little Bessie figured that out. Quickly. Oh, yeah. She loved <laughs> laying right in front of she the She would old... get right in front of there's like a little vent area. Yep. And, she would... and we'd point it towards her. <laughs> She knew exactly what she was doing. But you could get, I think the big bag of ice was like 99 well, cents. At yeah. So every day we just go yeah. uh, get our ice, fill up the icy breeze. Yep. And the thing was by evening, it would cool down. You oh, didn't yeah. need icy breeze. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're actually going to have an episode at some point coming up where we're going to talk about off grid power mm -hmm. for an RV. Mm -hmm. And do you really need to have 1200 Watts of solar and 600 oh, amp oh, hours oh, of oh. battle born batteries? We don't I think feel you like do. Tim man Taylor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more power. <laughs> um, but that's another episode. Yep. But anyway, Brazoria Beach, Surfside, oh. Texas. Now, maybe cool. you're thinking, um, you know what? I'm I wouldn't mind going to the Texas. But I want beach. some shore power. I want some shore power. If you go up the road about 20 minutes awesome in place. Galveston, we stayed last spring break yep. at Stella Mare 
or Stella Mar, Mar Mari, Mar, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, RV resort there in Galveston, Texas. Now Beautiful. you're not on the beach. Nope. You're going to have to, you're, you're you... across the road, basically. Um, I if I remember right though, distance. there was no beach across the no, road. No, you had to go there. The beach access was down a ways. Just a ways road. though. You had to drive to that one or ride your bike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, Stella Mare, we'll call it, we'll yeah. call it M A R E. <laughs> Stella Mare, um, very nice, full service, full hookups. Oh, yeah. Um, really a, kind of like a resort, right? Well, they had like, remember that, like, uh, I call it for kids that water area, like a water park, yeah. I had, mean, not a water park, but a splash pad, that's it. And it was really big. And then they had a nice pool, yep. and um, they had a cool spots, so they had like a place that was double decker level and they had like some swings and different things you could you could look out at the water right. if you wanted to go sit up there with your beverage and look out but it was it was neat there and we had stayed there last spring right mainly we were originally going to go back to surfside because right. i really like staying there but we had had a really rough day yeah. getting because we were down in texas getting some rv repairs and of course on that day with rv repairs it was 97 degrees it was super hot <laughs> out and we got out of the dealership late and we still had a i don't know three hour drive or whatever it is yeah. from austin over right. um and so our friends uh bobby and april yep. from travels abound yep. youtube had stayed there the prior winter and had like, recommended to us and i said to pat i'm like you know what i'm tired you know, we need to salvage this spring. It's going to be, trip. It, we yeah. knew it was going to be dark when we got there. And I didn't know if I really wanted to try to find a spot on the beach at dark and it was hot. And so anyway, that's how we ended up at yep. Stella Mare for Fire. a couple nights, yeah. and it was but nice. it was really nice. In fact, it's so nice that Bobby and April are actually spending a couple months there. Yeah. This they're going to be in the winter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if time. you're thinking, Hey, I like the idea of going to Texas uh, and trying out the Texas beaches, but no, I'm not into this whole off grid camping. Well, that we found would be a some really option. cool places to eat that looked out yeah. of the water, and it just, there's some historical stuff there also, and it's nice. Galveston, Galveston's a nice area, which is just outside of Houston. Mm-hmm. My biggest beef for us, because we're coming from Ooh, the north, is long way. you have to get well, one, it's a long drive, and two, Houston. It, you have to get through Houston. Yeah. Although everybody told me how bad Houston was, and, it, and I'm sure it is. But I think you know, once you go through New York City, after you go through New York City, <laughs> everything seems like a cake. The George Washington Bridge, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything's um, a cakewalk. After my this. biggest complaint about Houston is their toll. It system. was weird. They, it was odd. They, yeah, you, you just drive through the tolls and then, you know, they snap your license plate or whatever. And there's signs that say, just go to this website to pay. But, but my it, job, to, they don't, it's like, if I'm not a honest person, I may not check that because they weren't going to well, send us a bill. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't send you weird. a bill. Cause like, like the toll road over in Austin, right? They will send oh, you yeah. a bill. In the mm-hmm. bill. Oh yeah. So Houston doesn't send you a bill. You're it's your responsibility to go, to go on and check. And, it's and not, I kept going online. It took a while. And they tell you it can take up to like 30 days yeah. or more like, for it to appear. So that was, it was kind of a pain. Cause I, I just wanted to get those tolls paid. It's not like an easy pass where it's instantaneous. No. So yeah. anyway, well, those are, those are, are, Love, four I beaches want to go to the beach. in the southeast and somebody will probably tell me well texas is that really the southeast to us well, it's the southeast. It is the southeast. at least that side of texas yeah. is so <laughs> yeah. um but yeah we think we think beach camping is a blast whether you're four blocks away or whether you're right on the same right right so absolutely so patty each week i like to provide in our episodes a delaney pro tip to try mm-hmm. to help out fellow RVers. right and this week is actually one of your tips yep from when we were camping at Brazoria Beach. <laughs> well, since we were on so much sand, and that sand, as you know, if you've ever been on sand, it sticks to everything. You, your skin, the puppies, it was just all over. So um, we ended up, I said, let's just put a tray of water, like a little container of water outside the door. And when you get near to get in, like your shoes or your sandals or even puppy paws, let's just dip them in the water and then step in like we had a towel. That way you could, hopefully get some of that sand off your feet yeah it's such a simple thing and so <laughs> we had we just had a small uh, a crate i guess not, not one of those deep ones no. like a thin crate yeah and i forget what i was carrying in at the it time a thin one yeah. and patty just said do you have anything that we could put a little bit of water in so we can rinse our shoes off to try to reduce the amount of sand coming in yeah. the trailer so we had a lot of sand yeah and, and i was like and here's the thing now if you have an outdoor shower you could use your outdoor but ours shower is on the opposite side yeah ours is on and i think most are on the opposite side of where your you rig. enter your trailer yeah. and so it was like well that would be counterproductive to 
you know, like go over, spray them off, and then have to walk through the sand to get <laughs> yeah. the sand. This was simple. We just had this little container of water, yeah. which we never em- emptied while we were there because mm-hmm. you didn't need to. No. It's not about being clean. It's about just, just a, trying to get some of that sand. Because all the sand then floats to the bottom. Right. And, and separates. Yeah. But that was an excellent idea. And especially for the puppies, because I could literally just hold them, kind of dip, dip their paws, <laughs> and then Patty would have a towel dry them off. Ready to go. Interestingly enough, as great as your tip is. Uh-huh. We still have sand periodically appearing. We're still in our finding trailer. sand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was lots of sand. Because you try to get it off of you. It's just, but it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. It's, it's almost like a free souvenir. That's right. <laughs> Well, Patty, this has been a lot of fun. Now I am super stoked for our uh, spring break trip. Absolutely. I love the beach. That's our spring break. I go to the beach. Yeah, we love going to the beach or near a beach. When you live in the Midwest after a long winter, you just want to get someplace where the weather's anywhere above freezing. And I'm always excited. I don't have to wear a coat. That's right. (laughs) Well, Patty, as we close out this episode, I would be remiss if we did not say thank you to our friend Jim, who is so kind to produce these for us. So if you're enjoying this podcast and you think the audio quality is amazing which it is it is uh, you can thank jim he's the one that makes this thing you know he he's like able to somehow put uh, lipstick on a pig i feel like i need to do like a round of applause a round of applause for jim yeah he, he has so graciously volunteered to do this for us and Very nice. uh, we really appreciate yep. it so. thank you jim all right everyone we hope you have enjoyed this episode of travels with delaney the podcast and until next time we'll see you on down the road Travels with Delaney, we'll see you on down the road.